Good afternoon. My name is Bailey and today I'm going to be showing you the importance of professionalism in the workplace. The objective of today's presentation will be to define the ins and outs of professionalism and how to apply it in the workplace, list ethical behavior that should be demonstrated in the workplace, and display examples of professional dress that would be worn in a business environment. This does seem like a lot of information to take in, but I assure you it will be extremely useful to everyone in this room. So with that, we are going to jump right in. I am going to start out today um, with a question for my audience. How many of you sometimes feel that situations aren't handled in the most professional way by your boss? Yes. Um, I feel that sometimes my boss can do a better job handling a situation in a more professional manner. Like, for example, last week, my boss went off on, on someone who asked a repetitive question, and I thought he should have handled it differently. So I agree. I think that is probably a common problem in the workplace where um, bosses take the wrong approach to either answering a question or handling a situation. And that could leave the wrong message for their employees, which could often rub the employees the wrong way and cause uh, detrimental problems. So, um, and I think that's all of us at some point that are in leadership that we may not handle um, a problem in the most efficient way or answer it in the most efficient way. So um, in my leadership experience over the years, one thing that's been essential for my success um, is professionalism and ethics um, as much as I can. And again, we're all still learning and everyone has uh, room for improvement. So I think that's a huge thing. <clears throat> Professionalism can be described um, as the way you dress um, or how one may handle a situation. When in any type of leadership role where you have people looking up to you, you want to always ensure you're keeping things professional and creating a good example. Um, I once took a leadership training session on professionalism. Um, it was led by Philip Van Hooser. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of him before, but um, the company that I work for uses him extensively to train the leadership uh, because he is very knowledgeable when it comes to professionalism, developing young leaders. Um, he is very, very um, experienced in that field. In the professionalism class that I took with him, it was a six week course and we took one class a week. And one of the major things that stuck with me was 12 qualities that any successful leader should put into action um, to make a personal impact. Uh, I've taken these and I've actually put them into my leadership career and today I'm actually going to be passing them along for you to use. Um, I reached out to Phil Van Hooser before um, this presentation and made sure he was okay with me sharing this information with you. He was more than happy to let me use it and he actually provided some helpful uh, hints on the presentation as well. Uh, I've actually made my own slideshow um, from the information that I gathered from him that I believe flows the best and is the most user friendly. Um, I've added my own examples and demonstrated how you could put these things into place in your own career. So with that, um, we are going to start with the PowerPoint. So the first thing that I want to discuss with you guys is being on time. So arriving to work on time um, shows your discipline and your commitment to your job and your employees and makes them take you seriously. So uh, an example of this is if you're coming to work on time every day and you're doing what you need to do, but you have a boss that's not showing up on time, you're not going to respect that boss as much because it's not as professional for someone in a leadership role to show up late to work, show up late from lunches, not be accountable, um, but expect you as an employee to be accountable for showing up on time. It would be really hard as an employee to have to show up on time and do what they need to do if you don't have a good example in leadership to do the same thing. So that's why um, I think being on time for me is the number one thing um, about professionalism. It shows accountability and I think all leadership have to show this uh, in order to be effective. Two, um, you're always needing to offer your assistance in leadership. Aiding employees um, is always going to provide proof of your commitment to your role. No matter the question, um, a positive attitude should always be shown and you'll also be more welcomed by your employees. Um, an example of this is when someone asks a question that may have been answered before, it's essential to use this as an opportunity to coach and provide them the answer rather than to get angry that the question was asked before. 
So this kind of goes back to the question um, or the answer to my question uh, that was asked at the beginning that some leaders um, don't have the professional knowledge to answer a question that may have been asked before in the most appropriate manner. I think with um, practice and experience and time that this gets a little bit easier for our leadership to answer questions that may have been asked before without getting as annoyed. Of course, everyone has like small things that have that are always going to push them. But as leadership, you always have to keep your cool and make sure that you're staying professional even when you do get agitated by something. So the next slide we're going to talk about is doing more than what you're expected. So there are people that are going to do a bare minimum to get by. I mean, that's life. Uh, there's always people that don't want to do as much as others. They're just going to do as much as they can to get the grade, to get the money, whatever the situation may be. But if you're a professional, you always have to do more than what's expected of you to set an example for others. Typically, if you're in leadership, you have people looking up to you, you have employees reporting to you, you have people that are going to be following the example that you're setting. So an example um, of this, doing more than expected, is when you're training an employee, you must go the extra mile to make sure that they understand the content and they're comfortable. So for me, I know that sometimes when uh, I have to hire new people for my team, I run a team of 18 people, and when we do hire, sometimes there's a few employees that take a little bit extra um, practice, and I have to actually sit with them one-on-one -on -one after they're in our three-week training program, because sometimes people just need a little bit more hands-on and a little bit more one-on-one -on -one coaching so they can actually get there to be 100%. For me, that's a part of professionalism because if you're not demonstrating that you're willing to go the extra mile, do more than what's expected to help your employees to be successful, then in my opinion, that's not a professional and a successful leader. So the next slide we're going to be talking about is don't whine, don't whisper, and don't wonder. So the three W's. So when someone says... Um, what someone says and how they say it, it speaks volumes about their professionalism. When tempted to whine, you need to suck it up. When you're tempted to whisper, you need to shut up. And when tempted to wonder, you need to speak up. So as an example, um, this is like not getting involved in workplace gossip or drama. If you're worried about something you said getting back to someone, you shouldn't have said it at all. This is like probably the number one most detrimental thing to A, employees, and to B, leadership. So if you're saying something um, about someone or you're talking about something that could get back to another individual that would A, hurt their feelings, B, make them upset, or anything that's really unethical, you shouldn't be speaking about that in the workplace especially. This is not a good look, especially if you're a leader, and it's definitely not a good look if you're in higher leadership and you have people that are reporting to you as well and they get that information. They're not going to think you're professional, they're not going to look up to you, and you're not setting an example for the people that are working for you. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is guarding your reputation. So you should never say things like, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. Uh, actually, what others think of you affects the way that they treat you. So you should always guard it accordingly and you should act accordingly based on this. An example is speaking about home life at work. Uh, there's a lot of people that may like to go out and party and get drunk on the weekends. That's totally fine, but you have to keep that balance separate from your work life because there's no reason that you should be telling people at work what you're doing on the weekend, especially if it's not necessarily ethical to all employees. So it's not a good idea to share this information with your colleagues. It's not saying it's necessarily wrong to do these things, but you should definitely keep a work uh, home life balance and you shouldn't bring things into work that could cause controversial views of yourself because that could have an impact on your employees, especially on the way that they view how professional that you are. If you post things on social media, that are questionable, such as clothing that may not be appropriate to all people, and you're in a leadership role, that could come back and negatively affect you, even though you may not have intentionally um, put that picture out for you know your colleagues or your employees to see. Social media is a dangerous thing nowadays because everybody knows everything about everyone. So everything is public. Everyone has access to people's Facebook profiles, Twitter, Instagram. 
So especially in the generation that we're in, we have to be extremely careful of not oversharing information that may be detrimental to our reputation. So the next slide is going to be talking about never compromising your integrity. Professionals must never choose a path that leads to something illegal, unethical, or inappropriate. Your integrity and the pedestal where your professionalism is displayed. So an example could be if you're short on a deadline and you don't want to look bad to your boss or to whoever you report to, so you can maybe cut a corner and you can complete the assignment but in unethical practice. And yes, you get the project done on time, but if you do it in an unethical way and then you get caught for it later, the consequences are going to be way greater on you than if you were to just turn the assignment in late or complete the project a day late. You always want to make sure you're doing things the correct way. Um, and if your employees see that you're doing something that's unethical, illegal, or inappropriate, they're never going to respect you the same way that they would respect someone else that is doing the job in the correct way. So there's a time and a place for everything. Of course, we're always going to have opinions and we're always going to have thoughts, um, but that does not mean we have to share them with either the people we work with or the people that report to us. So you have to be very careful about the things that you say and who you're sharing that information with. You want to make sure that you have a high level of integrity, whether you are an employee or especially in leadership, because you're always going to have people that are looking up to you. So the next slide is going to be committing to constant improvement. So you must always be willing and wanting to learn more. Even the highest leaders must, and most professional people, they don't know everything. So if you think you know everything, you don't. There's always room to learn more information and there's always room for improvement, whether that's in your job, your home life, whatever you may be doing. Especially in leadership, um, leaders must always make sure that they're opening the horizons um, for more improvement and more things to learn. An example of this is uh, like attending or being excited for opportunities to learn, even if it's going to take time out of your day. I know for me, I have to take a lot of leadership courses through my job. Um, they require it, but even if they didn't, I think I would take those on my own time just because I know I get so much beneficial information from it. Uh, just as a professional, I have developed so much um, just from leadership courses and professionalism can improve every single day, no matter uh, what information that you're learning. So um, I think that learning opportunities are a big key to professionalism. The next thing we're going to be talking about is working to solve problems rather than placing blame. So you must use knowledge and problem solving abilities rather than placing the blame for the problem occurring. So this means that if something goes wrong, which it always will, You've got to come up with a solution to take care of the problem and to figure out a way in which uh, maybe the problem won't occur in the future. So an example is if something goes wrong and you don't tell the employee, um, you, you never should tell the employee uh, what they did to cause a problem, but rather offer um, the solution and you can coach them to prevent it from happening in the future. So this means that you don't automatically say, well, this is your fault, you caused this because of something that you did wrong. No, the way I would approach it is, listen, you know, this is what happened and here's the solution. So next time we're gonna take these steps to ensure it doesn't happen again. Not a big deal, but just like, let's make sure that we learn this information so we are more prepared in the future if something happens. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is being loyal. So you should always show appreciation towards your employees and you should always provide effective leadership skills and this will in turn cause them to be loyal to you. They always say that people normally don't hate their jobs, they hate the boss that they work for. So an example is providing rewards such as PTO um, or a gift card for employees who are doing um, a good job. So I know in my role um, I had three employees last year who were in the top 10 in our department. So they didn't really get a special reward. They got recognition from um, our department head. But as a manager, I felt like it was my duty to reward them a little bit extra for the hard work that they did. So I actually gave each one of them a $25 gift card just to kind of show my appreciation towards them. 
and let them know that they did a great job last year. The last thing I want is for them to feel underappreciated and not do as good of a job next year because they didn't feel like their work was recognized and they didn't feel that they needed to do a good job. So the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is striving for excellence and not for perfection. So as we all know, no one's perfect. And as a leader, you should always strive for excellence in your position rather than to be perfect. So no one's ever going to be perfect no matter how hard you work, how much you learn, how much you go to school. Unfortunately, you're never going to be perfect. Um, there's always going to be some type of flaw or issue that you have to deal with. But um, is, if an example is if something goes wrong or you miss a deadline, you should take note of this and solutions to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, so the next slide that I'm going to be talking about is... <clears throat> don't give up. Um, you should give out. So you should never give up no matter how much how tough the situation is. Um, you should give out your time, your resources, and your energy to provide an impact and a lasting difference to your employees. An example is when you have a high rate of attrition, so employees either um, getting let go or quitting, you have to keep pushing and make necessary changes to make sure you're doing all that you can for your employees. Um, this is extremely important because it shows the other employees that are still working for you how much you care and how much that you want them to continue working for you. And the last thing that I want to talk about is being thankful. So as a leader, you should always be grateful for the blessings that you have, whether that's the opportunities or your employees. You should always be grateful and you should show it. So an example is when you may be stressed about your job or ready to give up. You need to sit back and think about all the positive things that happened in the last month, year, etc. So I know recently my job has been super tough for me just because the start of the new year and we have really high goals and we have people who are finding new jobs and we just have a lot going on right now. But I have to just sit back and try to relax and think about all the positive things that have occurred in the last year. Um, we hit goal and we did really well last year and I have to manifest that into this year's work so we can also continue to do well. So um, with that, those are the 12 steps that I think um, of becoming a professional. I'm now going to be showing a YouTube video um, based on appearance and its link to professionalism. So the video is going to be playing here. Meet George and Sally. They were newlyweds, recently graduated from BYU. George was just offered a promising position to Chicago, and the future seemed very bright. However, the process of moving soon became a nightmare, as they had to deal with selling their old house and buying a new one in the midst of a very lousy housing market. In Utah, George chose John to be his real estate agent to help him sell his house. John meant well and was really nice, but fell short of being professional. John wore casual clothing, always made silly jokes, and drove around with a vehicle littered with children's toys and other garbage. This didn't bother George too much. Just as long as the job got done, he was okay with mediocre appearance. But as the months went by, it was evident that John's appearance was also a reflection of his second-rate work ethic. The agents who succeeded had the entire package of professionalism. They treated their work not as a hobby, but as their very livelihood necessary for their survival. Most of all, they treated Gary and Sally as genuine clients. Their work and appearance demonstrated the fact that they really cared. Your personal brand is the way in which you showcase your expertise. This will distinctly identify you from others in the same field. In other words, your personal brand defines who you are. Do you realize that when you are at work, you are constantly telling people who you are and what your personal brand is? Just by being you, you are creating a brand both for yourself professionally and for your office or department. Effectively creating and exuding a personal brand will help you find success in the professional workforce and in your personal life. So um, that video was basically showing you how your appearance can affect um, your impact on others and your professionalism um, appearance. 
So um, basically you saw that there was a situation where someone wasn't dressed nice and it gave a first bad impression because they weren't professional. So basically it's really important that you dress nice and you also have your own self logo so you can pre present yourself in a professional way. So conclusion, um, as you've been able to see, being professional and ethical has many different parts and components. Um, it's reflected in the way that you act, it's reflected in the way that you speak, and the way that you handle situations. Um, it also is presented, or it's also shown in the way that you present yourself. These are crucial in the workplace and for all individuals and in leadership roles. Thank you so much everyone for watching today. And uh, that's going to wrap up our presentation on professionalism. Thank you so much.